Hi all, welcome back to Beanie Composter. If I'm looking a little bit worse for wear this morning, then it's because we all went out for a Chinese last night. It was one of those eat all you like buffets. And when I saw the price, five pound per person, I thought that is a proper bargain. So unfortunately though, I didn't read the small print. When we walked in, we only got one chopstick each, so I uh, wasn't able to eat so much. Back on to today's subject, and this is a couple of things that I think could be interesting for most people that own a hot bin. I've been browsing the internet over the last few days, and I came across what I thought was a UHO, which I would describe as an unidentified hot bin object. So stay tuned and we'll show you what that is and my thoughts about it in a you know in a bit but if you haven't already been looking at the hot bin composting website you may have not seen that they've actually introduced quite a few new spare parts a little while ago we did a video on spare parts that I'd like to see from the hot bin company and whether they've listened to the channel or whether they're just doing it because you know that's what the consumer wants then I'm not sure but anyway it's a big thumbs up to the hot bin company for supplying parts that I think are quite essential for especially people with an older hot bin so if you look on there you've got things like a base plate you're able to get hold of a new door a new lid charcoal bags even the little wire mesh that to be honest my mini hot bin i emptied it a few weeks ago and when i pulled out the wire mesh it's actually you know half of it's sort of dis disintegrated which you know i'm not sure if the parts they're getting are, are like a poorer quality but the mark one hot bin that i've had for you know years and years now is still actually just as good as the day i bought it but some of the parts that i've got from the mini including the raking stick have just sort of like fallen apart and they don't seem to last as long as perhaps they should but it's actually quite handy now that you can get those spare parts online rather than trying to mishmash something together yourself so if your hatch door has warped or you need a new charcoal bag and that's something I'll be coming into talking about in a little bit later on in the video then it is actually quite good that you can just go onto the hot bin company's website and buy these things directly rather than trying to source them from elsewhere so once again a big thumbs up to the hot bin company for you know putting those on the web page that we can all get hold of if we need to. I think the channel's growing really well at the moment. We're over 700 subscribers, which is fantastic. So thank you to every one of you that have subscribed and and especially to people that give comments, not just for me, but for everyone else on the channel to look at and get ideas from. And if you haven't already subscribed, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button, all that jargon and, and stuff that you, you're supposed to do. But I've had a few good comments recently. One of them was from Samuel Corey. He was struggling with his hot bin, getting the temperature up, and it had been, I think, borderline in around the 30, 40 mark. And then he took out the, the charcoal bag, which isn't recommended by the hot bin company but then they're actually selling you charcoal bags on the hot bin company website so how the hell are you going to change it if you're not supposed to be taking the thing in and out but anyway afterwards the hot bin temperature just rocketed now the hot bin company state on their website that that's something that you shouldn't do and i personally wouldn't advise that because the charcoal bag is there to eliminate any odours which you don't really want to be attracting flies and vermin to your hot bin but looking at the spare parts on the actual company website I did actually think what would be quite a good idea if you've got an older hot bin or you're not worried about the warranty thing 
then you could almost a bit like you do it indoors with hoovers and that you could have a spare charcoal filter that if you do have like a period of heavy rain and you think your charcoal bag is completely wet then you could swap it over with a dry one now the charcoal bag is going to get wet it's part and process of hot composting is you produce steam which will come out of the top so you're never going to have a completely dry charcoal bag but maybe if you're worried that it is completely drenched and you just want to replace it then that is a a thing that you could maybe approach and try out just to see if it does make your hot bin get even hotter as i say the hot bin doesn't recommend you do this so if you are going to do this i'm not advising it just do it at your own risk that's just a pre-warning but i've managed to take both of mine off this morning so it is quite doable and like I say they're actually advertising the charcoal bag so what are you going to do you're going to change it yourself if you buy a replacement bag anyway so this is how you do it I don't want to do it too many times otherwise the top's going to be like a dick in a shirt sleeve and you know anyone who don't understand that saying it would be loose as you know what so yeah I wouldn't recommend doing this on a regular basis but the material it's made out of it's pretty foolproof so this is how you do it I am pretty sure that all of these tops are interchangeable between the mini and the larger one but there are some things I notice are different on the mark 1 compared to the mark 2 so if you are perhaps ordering a replacement um, hatch door or even lid then it is worth contacting the hot composting company first just to make sure you are getting the right part but back to how to take this top bit off and take the charcoal bag out just be gentle when you do this this morning is the first time I ever took off the my mark one top bit and it was a little bit of a struggle at first because it'd been on there for so long but the actual mini which is quite new that came off real easy but I'll show you on the mark one because now it's come off it should be quite straightforward on this top bit here you've got the dial and you've got the valve so before you start ripping it off I would close the valve shut just make sure you know you're not going to knock and damage that and you've got like a little bit of a gap there in the front which you would think maybe you're going to pry something in but I wouldn't recommend that because you'll probably just end up damaging your hot bin if you do that now when I'm coming on to this um, UHO thing the un unidentified hot bin object this is part of what I noticed and I was sort of thinking maybe where you've got this gap here you probably get a lot of water going down there but when we take it off we'll see that perhaps that isn't the case but I get both hands at the back where you've got like the ridge that comes up and you can almost just gently put your elbows on the lid here and grab with both your hands there and just gently sort of pull this back bit up now it'll take a little while but if you just gently pull it you'll feel it'll just come out like that so it takes a little bit of force but don't you know don't go crazy with it just pull it off and you'll see it just literally come out and that thermometer that's on the the top bit that's just pushed in your that'll be stuck into your charcoal bag so just gently prise it all out without trying to damage anything now the charcoal bags loose so that had just come out literally like that and you'll be left with you know a part where you could either clean it up before you put your new bag in but to be honest I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend cleaning it up because you're just gonna get water everywhere unless your bins completely empty so there's your charcoal bag 
it literally just comes out like that and then when you put it back in then you want to just make sure it's nice and level and you've got nothing overlapping like the edges that can get caught up when you put the actual lid bit back on there so make sure it's nice and flat nothing's protruding out and you know you can give that a clean up if you want to so on this part here you've got a little bit of a lip there which if you see under here it actually slots in so where i thought rain would perhaps be getting into this part it's actually quite sealed so i don't think that is the case but when you're adding it back in make sure that slots in there first and then just slowly like put the probe back, back into the charcoal bag you'll feel it go in and then just gently slide it down and you know a little bit of pressure and pushing towards yourself and you'll hear it just click in and just you know make sure it's nice and home and and that's it that's how you would replace your charcoal filter bag if you needed to we're october 2022 as we're filming this video and the price of a new hot bin on the com hot bin company's website is now 300 pounds which as everybody knows everything is going up in price nowadays so you know it seems quite a lot of money and that's why sometimes I do tend to have a look on eBay to see just what is available in terms of second-hand ones and with the addition of all these new spare parts it's actually quite good that you could almost refurbish a, an old hot bin that's got a bit of damage or you just want to replace a few items quite easily now and the prices of the new things are quite reasonable on the website so I think you could pick up a you know a second hand hot bin we have got a video showing you know things to look out for but now it's even easier to get you know even a probably more damaged one than before and, and replace a few parts and almost have a refurbished brand new one so definitely that's a good thing if you're looking to do hot composting on a budget you don't have to just go out and get a brand new one for 300 pound i think you could get one a bit cheaper and that brings me on to the um uho which was i was looking on ebay a few you know a week or so ago and i noticed one on there which was the 200 liter mark ii but it actually had a different lid that we've just taken off so hopefully you'll see that in the, the corner of the screen or somewhere and i was a bit surprised at first i kind of thought it was cheap as well it said it was brand new 170 pound i thought to myself if i had enough money i'd probably buy it myself but it didn't give a lot away and when I tried to pan in to, you know, to check, I mean at first I thought maybe it's one of those Chinese counterparts that, you know, they produce for peanuts and, and they've done like one of those copies. But when I sort of tried to pan in it did look like the original hot bin, you know, logo and print stuff on there. So it just seemed strange that the top was completely different and it sort of baffled me for a little while if you have seen this type of lid or you've ordered a brand new one mind you I did look on the company website to see if they changed some things and and then the ones they were showing didn't have this lid on them and I think if you know a little bit about your hot bins you'll know what I've just taken off looks completely different to the one that's on this picture but I did sort of come up with a few conclusions. So I did think with all the hybrid working that's going on now, I thought maybe the hot bin company have had someone in on work experience and they've just said to the to the guy, Will, we got to work from home today. We got to send a load of emails to that Damien Williams that keeps emailing us about that leachade stuff. 
So we'll be working from home. You'll be all right in the office putting all those lids on the hot bins, won't you? So maybe they've just had some work experience person that's put the wrong lids on the wrong thing. And then I thought, I was looking at the mega hot bin and it looked like the lid that's on the hot, mega hot bin looks exactly the same as what's on that 200 litre hot bin. And that's what made me think, well, maybe someone's just come in completely stoned out of their head. It just doesn't give a you-know-what. And has mixed up all the, the lids on the tops of the hot bins. But maybe that's not the case. I did actually think, could it be that the hot bin company have swapped the lids over now they've got the new one on the hot bin mega bin that if you look at it it's, it's kind of flatter and it's got more of a sort of what I'd call a weatherproofing where the rain would run off it rather than maybe go into the little crevices so I did think maybe they have changed it but like I say on the website it doesn't show that on the new models if you have seen this before or you've ordered a hot bin and it has got one of these new I don't know what it's called, new air charcoal lids on the top of it, then please leave some comments and let us know what you think is going on. And if you have got a hot bin mega, then I think it is quite clear from the pictures that that is the lid that's on this um, 200 litre Mark II one. So just a little bit of food for thought for everyone to sort of have a look at and see what your opinions on it are I just thought I've never seen one that looks like that before so it was quite interesting to do a little bit of research into what it could be and I think it's quite nice just to you know do a video on these spare parts and and what you can actually get if you're looking for a, a cheaper hot bin solution well i think that's clear to see enough waffling from me for today i hope this video has given you a little bit of help or has inspired you to maybe buy a second hand hot bin or even attempt to replace your charcoal bag like I say, the hot bin doesn't recommend it, so please read what they say first before you go ahead with it. But it is quite a straightforward job if you do want to do it. And maybe we can get to the bottom of this lid thing and all the different things that you see. As I've said, we're over 700 subscribers now. And a few of you I know have been inspired at getting the hot bin and a few of you have got new ones and I know I've been getting loads of comments from Damian Williams and fantastic for the channel and it, it really does help everyone out to sort of read those comments so thank you very much Daniel and a big congratulations on getting your hot bin up to 70 degrees in a short space of time and it looks like from what I've read on the comments he's getting more obsessed than I am with the thing but you know it's it's great to see everyone's enthusiasm on this channel and that's really what it is about it's creating a community where we can all have a little bit of a laugh a joke and um, but also a bit of seriousness there that you know our passion is the hot bin and composting so let's just hit off each other and bounce off each other and inspire each other to to keep things going and I've got a few great experiments that I think is going to sort of help out. One of them inspired by Samuel about the charcoal bag. So I am going to do an experiment where I take that out and see if it does affect the temperature. Another thing with, um, with the cost of living, I'm thinking about bringing the hot bin inside and seeing if I can actually use that to heat the house up. Missy's doesn't really know too much about that one so we're gonna have to try and keep that a bit of a secret between ourselves i'm getting a bit fed up keep weeing into the hot water bottle for the missies <laughs> and uh, there are just like you know a few other ones i've got in my head that i want to do for the channel 
thanks for watching. Don't forget if you haven't already sub subscribed to subscribe. I think I'm getting tongue tied now, so all there is left to say is happy composting and enjoy.